Hello everyone, my name is Terry Vinson and I welcome you to the Micronix Python for Network Engineers course. This is the primer video series that's going to be necessary to kind of outline what it is I want everybody to know. Now, you've signed up for this course. Now, that means that you, one, should have received the information to be able to log in to the online classroom. And two, you should also be receiving an interface that's going to allow you to be able to log into this particular video on demand series. And also, it's going to be where you're going to be um, able to access the recordings of the sessions that we actually work with. Now, what I want to do is I want to basically start by way of introduction. As I said, this is Python. Now, Python is a vast language. There is a lot of nuance to it. You can do many, many things. It's involved in everything from something as simple as web page design to something as complex as machine learning. However, we're here for the express purposes of utilizing Python as a networking tool. So this course is actually called Python for Network Engineers. I'll just say networkers because I'm lazy and I don't want to have to write everything out. So Python for networkers. Now, the cool part about that is, is that that basically means that we as networkers only need to have an access or have access to a subset of all of the features that exist inside of Python. We will be using Python for the purposes of automation. Now, what I want everybody to understand right out of the gate is that we automate when we do something more than once. So a lot of people are entering Python as far as a programming language or a scripting language. I prefer to call it a scripting language. But they're entering it with the impression that they can do everything that they can do at the command line using Python. And you can. However, the object of being able to do something like writing a script means that you're going to be doing the same thing over and over. So as an example, I'll use Python scripts on scratch installs where I'm going to be doing initial builds. So as an example, uh, on a router or on a switch, I'll go in and configure things like my uh, domain, my IP, do IP domain name. I'll configure the... Uh, the SSH sessions, I'll configure all of my RBAC, my AAA, all of those things that I'll actually end up doing on a regular basis to every device where every device is going to be the same, that's when I use something like automation. If I have five devices that I want to be able to configure and maintain actively where everything is different, there are, all five devices have unique components to them, then I gotta make some specific decisions. I gotta decide, well, is it in my best interest to just log into these resources and do it programmatically uh, using Python? Or is it in my best interest to log into these devices and just do it from the command line interface? Now, the other thing that we also have to keep in mind here is, is that people are looking at Python as a tool. Now, I'll, as a networker, and I'm a hardcore infrastructure guy, as a network engineer, a lot of people are afraid that there's going to be thousands, if not tens of thousands, of programmers that are going to come in and start taking the jobs away from network engineers because everything's moving to this concept of automation. The thing that you have to keep in mind is, is that automating something is a process. Knowing how to actually implement what you're trying to automate is a networking task. So what we find here is I have networkers that are wanting to learn Python who know how to do the command line, who how to know, know how to do everything manually from the perspective of accessing the devices and empirically doing all the configuration, but they don't know anything about the programming language. And that's what this class is for. Now, the other side of the coin is, is I've got programmers who are genuinely interested in getting involved in what we're referring to as the software-defined networking industry, but the problem is, is they have absolutely no understanding of how networking works. So right now, today, and probably for the next year or so, maybe even longer, there's going to be a disconnect between these two elements. And that's going to be the void that many of us are going to be here trying to fill. Now, am I saying that I can't automate the differences? No, I'm not. However, I have to look at everything from the perspective of how do I write a script that's going to do everything the same on six devices and then allow me to be able to exude or to exert oversight over how things may be implemented using the same program or the same script from the perspective of the device differences. Do I use text files and write all of the individual differences in? And if I do, isn't that kind of static? 
And are there other tools? So as an example, we will be discussing a number of tools in this class. And again, this is going to be for the purposes of actually doing automation. Now, the inference here is, is that Python is a tool. There are other tools that we're going to use. Of those, we will use a lot of what we call Python modules, sometimes called libraries. Now, in this class, we're going to talk about the old school Telnet library. So it's basically a module that I can install into Python that allows me to Telnet to devices. It's very, very old. It's very, very um, limited in what it can do, but it's an excellent way for us to introduce ourselves to the concept of accessing devices, both logical and physical, using some kind of programmatic means. And it also is an excellent stepping point into discussing how this entire process has actually evolved. But what we're going to do is we're just going to play around with that. We're going to write some scripts. We're going to talk about things that we're going to do. But I want to make certain that we are actually doing as much as humanly possible on devices as early as possible in this class. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're also going to move to some other modules. Now, one of my favorite ones is a module called NetMiko. And NetMiko is really cool. It was written by Kirk Byers. And NetMiko gives me the capability of being able to insert a module that's going to make my Python script understand how to communicate to multiple vendor devices. Cisco, Juniper, Aruba, whatever, doesn't really matter. 90% of the stuff is baked into NetMiko. There are also other modules that we'll look at like Napalm. And one of my personal favorites is also a standalone utility called Ansible. Ansible is a very, very handy tool. Ansible is an application that I can use in its own right, but it's also written as a module that can be run from inside of my Python scripts. Now, in order to be able to leverage this functionality, we have to understand one thing, and that's going to be probably the most important thing I'm going to be covering in this video series. And that's going to be, how do I write scripts? How do I troubleshoot scripts? As well as, how do I interact with scripts? Actually, it should be an I. So how do I interact? with scripts. So I have this program as an example. We'll just call it script.py. PY stands for Python. So it basically is saying, okay, use the Python executor to run the script. And we'll call it, we just call it script. Now inside of the script, I have to write everything that I want to have happen. So I have to tell it, load one of these modules. I have to tell it, to allow me to provide information. So as an example, I could set a variable. We'll talk about variables. And uh, that variable could be the IP address of a device, and I could create another variable that could be the admin password and username to access that device. But the problem with that is, is that I'm embedding that in my code, so if somebody finds my script, they can actually find that information. So I may actually want to have the system or the script solicit the information that I need that I can enter at the time that I want to execute my program. These are all things that we need to look at and work with and we are going to in the confines of this video series and in the actual networkers uh, class. The goal here is, is we have to understand, like I said, first how to write scripts, how to troubleshoot scripts, and then how to create a level of interaction. Now that's not just interacting with me, the user, I could actually interact with the device that the program's running on. So I could actually access the hard drive and run a script. We could create like an answer file and we could use that answer file to provide information that we can use to, as an example, push a configuration change or modification to a router. Now, what we'll end up doing early on in this class is, is we're going to be focusing on Python, not necessarily focusing on actually implementing changes. So a lot of the things that we're going to be doing from the perspective of interacting with the router or the switch that we're going to be using is, is going to be in the form of show commands. We'll execute like a show run. I'll show you how to save a show run to a text file. 
then I can show you how later on to actually use that text file to replace the running configuration that you currently have. It's not going to be very, very granular, especially in the beginning. And we're going to find that as we progress through our conversation, we're going to need more and more tools in order to be able to be more and more granular. Now, the benefit of this is, is that we don't have to write these ourselves. Somebody, Kirk Byers, wrote NetMiko. Somebody wrote Napalm. Red Hat provided Ansible. Ansible was not built for the purposes of configuring networks. However, it is a very, very useful tool for being able to do that. So when we start looking at what is it being implemented here, we are looking at the idea of what we refer to as DevNet, so develop per network operations. Now, from a 30,000 foot view, that's going to imply a lot of things. And we have to start somewhere. And the best place to start is going to be right here. Learning how to write scripts and learning what tools we have available to us in Python to be able to do specific things. Now, we are going to discuss a great number of things, and I am actually going to be sharing a folder with you guys. I have a Google Drive that we'll be sharing, and inside that Google Drive, I'm looking at the output right here on my screen, there are going to be a series of .py scripts. Now, I don't want you guys to execute those scripts. What I want you guys to do is I want you to actually be able to open those scripts because if we look at what's happening, each of the things we're going to be talking about in this video series and in the class are going to relate to the things that we have in these files. So may as well just dive right over to the equipment and take a look at that. You see here I have eight files. I have eight Python scripts, one called variables, one called introduction to strings. We have what are referred to as if, if else and else statements. We have introduction to lists. We have Python tuples. We have introduction to sets. We have introduction to dictionaries, and we have introductions to functions. Now, if I were to open one of these, I'm not executing the script. Basically, what this is going to do is this is going to be everything that I'm going to demo in this class. So rather than you worrying about typing stuff and keeping track with the way I'm doing things and what I'm doing, what I want you guys to be able to do is just copy and paste and see what happens. I'm going to teach you guys how to fire up and use Python on your local desktop in the class. We will have a host that everyone will connect to, and that host will be connected to network resources. In, <laughs> in this specific class, I will be using Cisco CSR1000Vs in virtualization, and we'll be running an Ubuntu Linux desktop. And that Linux desktop is going to be the workstation that we're going to access in order to be able to configure these routers. Now again, in the beginning, we're not going to be configuring anything. In the very, very beginning, what we're going to be doing is executing show commands. And then we will actually move forward until such time that we're going to be able to execute scripts that are going to read multiple devices. In the class right now, I only have two CSRs. Some of my demos, I may actually demo using NXOS inside of my actual lab. But just keep in mind, two devices are more than enough for us to actually fulfill the needs of learning what's necessary to be a knowledgeable and functional as Python users and at the same time as network engineers. So what we're going to do is I'm going to kick off in the next video a discussion about variables. Variables are very, very important in every programming language, whether we're talking about C++, whether we're talking about Python, all employ variables. The good news is, is Python simplifies the process for us. And we'll discover that mechanism, and we'll talk about it in depth in the next video. Till then, I'm Terry Vinson, and I'd like to thank you for learning Python with me.